In this second half of lecture 10 for Math 1220 Calculus 2, we're actually going to start section 7.2, Trigonometric Integrals from James Stewart's Calculus textbook. Uh, this section is going to focus primarily on integrating techniques applied to functions involving trigonometric functions like sine, cosine, tangent, etc. Right now, the, the techniques we're going to use here, we're going to employ u substitution predominantly in this section and we will sometimes need to use integration by parts which we saw in section 7.1 and so i want to show to you how can you how how do the u substitution the integration parts technique combined with trigonometric identities uh, to help us find antiderivatives of trigonometric functions so in this first video we're going to look at examples of functions that involve sines and cosines so only sines and cosines we'll deal with uh, the other trig functions later on. If we only have sines and cosines, um, how can we handle uh, finding the antiderivative? And it turns out our good friend is going to be the Pythagorean identity sine squared plus cosine squared equals one. So why do we care about this so much? Well, some things to notice here is if you took this equation solve for sine squared, you see that sine squared is equal to one minus cosine squared. And likewise, if you had solved it for cosine squared, you're going to get cosine squared x equals 1 minus sine squared x. So the Pythagorean identity uh, gives us the capacity of switching a statement of, that involves sine into cosine. It can also switch from cosines to sine. So this is a way of converting between sines and cosines in our integral. Now, in order to use this Pythagorean identity, we do want to have squares, right? Because the other option is we take sine of x equals plus or minus the square root of one minus cosine squared. Uh, and this is this this identity right here is not going to be a good friend to us because one, we really don't want to put square roots in the integrand if we don't have to. Plus also we have to worry about this plus or minus sign depending on which quadrant we're in. And so that adds a ton of complexity that we aren't going to approach it that way. Uh, we'll stick with sine squared becomes one minus cosine squared and cosine squared equals one minus sine squared. Uh, and the other thing to keep track of in this situation is that uh, when it comes to sine and cosine, they're their own, they're, they're the derivatives of their complements, right? So the derivative of sine, recall, is cosine. And then the derivative of cosine is equal to negative sine. So there is this extra minus sine in front, but a constant multiple is not a big deal when it comes to integration here. And so because of this, we can play this game of u substitution all the time. So oftentimes when you deal with a trigonometric integral, you actually, if you're going to do a u substitution, you actually choose the du first instead of the u. So what I mean is take a look at this expression right here, cosine uh, cubed equal, uh, co integral of cosine cubed x dx here. So what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to set aside my cosine x dx first. Uh, and then we'll leave, well, there's a cosine, cosine squared left over. And so this cosine of x dx, I'm kind of setting aside, I want this to be my du. Uh, now, if my du is cosine, that means my u should in fact be a sine. Or more specifically, if I take sine uh, u to be sine of x, then du would then become cosine x dx, like so. Now, if I want sine to be my u, you'll notice the integral doesn't have any sines in it. But aha, cosine squared can transition to be a 1 minus sine squared. So if we put that into play here, the cosine squared from above will transition to become a 1 minus sine squared x. And then this cosine x dx we're reserving for our u, like so. Then notice this statement right here, the one minus sine squared, that just becomes a one minus u squared. And this right here becomes my du. And so very quickly, I can switch this into a nice u substitution uh, where this would look like the integral of one minus u squared du, for which the antiderivative would be u minus u cubed over three plus a constant. And so then if you plug back in u, which u is sine, we get our antiderivative of sine x minus one third uh, sine cubed x plus a constant. 
uh, which is our antiderivative right there. And so with the right u substitution, we can make trigonometric integrals possible, right? And it comes down to identifying what's the right u, what's the right du. And oftentimes, like I said, when you want to do a u substitution with trigonometric integrals, you might want to choose the du first. All right, let's look at another example of this. Let's consider this time the integral sine to the fifth x cosine squared x dx. Now, when it comes to dealing with these trigonometric integrals, you're mostly going to want to focus on the powers here, right? So we have a we have five sines and we have two cosines. Which one is preferable? Now, like we saw before with those Pythagorean identities, let's take a peek at them one more time right here. With these Pythagorean identities, right, we can transition sine squared into 1 minus cosine squared and cosine squared. Now, that works really great if you have even powers because if you had like a sine to the fourth x, that's the same thing as sine squared squared. And so if you can transition a sine squared over to 1 minus cosine or a cosine squared into a 1 minus sine squared, who cares whatever the powers are? So this, this process right here works really well when you have even powers. Right, And then looking at this cosine, we have a three cosine. The thing is we set one cosine aside for the U substitution and then the rest was even here. So what we saw right here, this U substitution looks really great when we have an odd power in the end. So transitioning happens great when you have even powers, but for the U substitution, you want an odd power. Uh, let's come back to this one right here. You notice we have an odd power of sine and we have an even power of cosine. So the, the cosine squareds can easily be turned into sine squareds because we could write those as a one minus sine squared if we wanted to, right? That transition's pretty easy. I mean, let me erase that. Now, since we have an odd number of signs right here, what we're gonna do is we're gonna take the extra sign because in terms of transitions, we want an even power. Take the extra sign since we have an odd number and we're gonna write that sine x dx and this is gonna become our du. That's gonna be forthcoming. That leaves us behind a sine to the fourth and a cosine squared right here. Now, if we want our du, if we want our du to be sine x dx, that had to happen because our u was cosine. But JK there, if d if u is d if cosine of x, then du would actually be a negative sine of x. So we do want a negative sign here and correct the negative there. It's not a big deal, just take a double negative. Uh, so with that in mind, this negative sign x dx then becomes a du, no problem. This right here will become a u squared. What do we do with the sine to the fourth? Well, that's what we were talking about just a moment ago. Sine to the fourth x is the same thing as sine squared of x squared. And since the sine squared becomes a one minus cosine squared, and cosine is u, sine to the fourth is to become one minus u squared quantity squared. And so you're gonna make that, uh, you'll make that substitution with your integral. So we have a negative integral, the sine to the fourth became a one minus u squared squared. The cosine squared becomes a u squared. And then finally the negative sine x dx becomes just our du. And we are able to transition entirely into uh, these u's. And now this is a polynomial expression in terms of u. Uh, we're going to have to foil out the 1 minus u squared squared there. Uh, just be careful as you do that. You'll end up with 1 minus 2u squared plus u to the fourth. Then distribute, distribute the u squared throughout this trinomial. Doing that gives us negative the integral. We'll get u squared minus 2u to the fourth plus u to the sixth. And now our patient is prepped for surgery. Let's perform the antiderivative procedure here. Uh, we'll get u cubed over 3 minus 2u to the fifth over 5 plus u to the seventh over 7 plus a constant, distribute that negative sign through. And also now we can replace all of the u's with cosine of x. And so we see the antiderivative will be negative one third cosine cubed x plus, because it's a double negative, two fifths cosine to the fifth x and then plus one seventh 
cosine to the seventh x plus an arbitrary constant, uh, which gives us then our antiderivative right here in this cute little yellow box. So what we did in these two examples, just to highlight what happened there, is that if we have some combination of sines and cosines, so we have sine to the a, cosine to the b, right? Um, if, if either one of these is odd, either the a is odd or the b is odd, the technique we, we have here is doable, right? So for the odd power, for the odd power, what we're going to do is we're going to take one. I'm going to take one for the du. And then everything left over, we can transition to sines and cosines, depending on which direction we need to go.